thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video we're going to look at a very simple technique that takes actually longer to set up than it does to actually perform and that is polar coordinates to create visuals very similar to the image that you just saw at the beginning of the video. Before I do that I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has in the last week purchased the latest course I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people that have actually purchased this and I hope that you are getting something from it and I really want to thank you for investing your hard-earned money and your valuable time in picking something up from the course. This will be the last video of 2024. I'm going to take a break for a couple of weeks, recharge, do the finishing touches on the art of Photoshop and then release that in the new year. Ah. Uh, I say that just now, I really enjoy creating these videos and maybe one more will creep into it, but I just, this is the last planned video of 2024. And my final thank you before the video is, I just want to say a massive thank you to all the subscribers who again are investing your valuable time to watch these videos. This year alone I've reached 20,000 subscribers and it's something that I didn't actually aim for for the channel i just wanted to create and pass on information as a lecturer as an educator i enjoy doing that so i want to say a massive thank you the channel alone has this year has reached over twenty thousand subscribers over one million views and over 90,000 hours watched. So I'm really glad you are enjoying it and getting something out of it. So I won't prattle on any longer. I just want to say again, a massive thank you. And we'll dive straight into polar coordinates. The first thing I'm going to do is use the crop tool and extend the canvas. And then using the lasso tool, draw around my subject, go to select inverse, and then use generative fill to fill in the areas. From here, I'm going to go up to select, select subject, and once that's selected, copy it onto a new layer, and then combine the two bottom layers. Turning off the top layer, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee to choose thin slices of colour throughout the image of the girl jumping. Now, I'm going to choose two or three of these and combine them together so that I can get the effect that I am seeking for this. So I'll select the areas of colour that I want and once they're selected press Command and J and then move back down to the background layer and choose another one to select looking at the colours that I want. Now I've left the background on this because I want the blue. Once they are selected it's just a case of aligning them and combining your selections into one layer and if there's any overlap within it once you zoom in crop where you don't want. There's a couple of areas here as well that I perhaps I'm dropping the yellow behind this but yet I want to see it so I can move it around to get the effect and delete areas that I don't want. Once I'm happy combine them all into one layer and again using the rectangular marquee tool select and press delete. Scale your image holding shift so that it reaches both edges. Now this is really important for this to work. And then turn your layers back on. It actually takes longer to prep the image than it does to get the effect. Simply go to filter, distort and polar coordinates and select the top option. And this happens. Now it won't be a perfect circle. So you then have to adjust that and I do that using Ctrl or Command and T and sometimes holding Shift just to squash it in and bring it down in size. Now you'll notice that there is a join in it and I rotate it so that I can hide it with any part of the image, in this case her arm. And then we move on to the next step, which is just lifting her from the circle in the background. And you simply do that by double clicking on the layer and an options panel appears and you select drop shadow. Now you can adjust this however you want. You can increase the shadow, make it tighter, make it 
softer it is entirely up to you and you can move the shadow around and I find the best option for moving the shadow around and placing it is via the mouse itself once you're happy with your decision just click OK and another thing that you can do is because I don't want the hand shadow going onto the background right click on drop shadow and select make layer and then for this layer, it creates a drop shadow layer. In here, I'm going to put a mask on it. And simply by using the brush tool, and in this case, black, I am going to paint out the areas that I don't want. In this case, the shadow of the hand. I don't want that going on to the background. And that's it. That's how you create this effect. It takes longer to set up than it does to actually do. And for the rest of this edit, I'm just going to speed it up just so that I can simply say that's what I believe Photoshop is. I think you learn a lot by watching tutorials from everybody. And then the rest of it is down to you just trying out different techniques. What works? What doesn't work? What do you think would look good with this? There is not a start and an end to anything when it comes to art. You'll know yourself when it is going to end. But like there, for example, I tried a zoom blur. I tried a motion blur as well and it didn't work. So the great thing about Photoshop is you can just delete what you don't like. Save the document, walk back to it. Don't get frustrated and delete it. Just do whatever you want and experiment further in your ability and your ability to learn new things and to try out new things. It's this form of experimentation with your images that will take you further down your Photoshop journey and hopefully make it more enjoyable for you as well. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see that it actually takes longer to set up in that style. It actually takes longer to set up to get the effect there when once you've done everything for setting it up, selecting the subject, stretching it out, it's simply a click of the button. <laughs> and that's what Photoshop is absolutely brilliant at doing. It's just a thought process to get through it to realise your end visuals. So I'm going to conclude this planned last video of 2024 with I just want to wish you all the best for the coming year. I hope you have a great Christmas if you celebrate that. And But I really wish you all the best for the coming year. I hope everything just works out the way you want it to. I'm going to leave you with one edit that I've just done in the last week there. Thanks again for watching. All the best for the coming year. And I'll see you in the next video.